Hang on, your sound's gone crazy, man. It's gone nuts. Okay, if you can hear me, man, I think you better hang up and call again. I think we should mention I've done I've done a bit of a, like a, a reboot and a refresh of our merchandise store on Teespring. So if anyone wants any T-shirts or a cup or a sticker or anything like that, we'll put links in the show notes and or you can just uh, Google like Teespring and Unmade Podcast. Make sure you're buying like official merchandise and not all the knockoff stuff that you know is a burgeoning industry. Well, that's I noticed that it's good. I like it. There's a few new designs. It's looking very clean, very sharp. I have to say, I'm able actually to see statistics of where stuff's like being ordered. Mm. And it is it is very apparent that most of the orders are being made by you. God, the, the, <laughs> <laughs> why would I be buying my own merchandise? <laughs> are you denying it? No, well, I, I do buy samples of different ones, yeah, for myself. And uh, probably kind of for posterity, but I got a few t-shirts. Surely someone else is buying them, or you wouldn't have renewed it. You wouldn't keep it going and be bothered, man. <laughs> I'm just making a fortune off of you. <laughs> <laughs> it is cool when you see them around. I tell you, bump into someone and they're wearing one. It's like, oh, that's great. Yeah? Where does that happen? Oh, it happens around. It's happened at work. When you look in the mirror. No. <laughs> oh, you look very handsome, me. <laughs> <laughs> you give them to family members and then insist they wear them when you meet mutual company. <laughs> I could just see you guys all around the dinner table, all looking, all everyone looking glum, being forced to wear their unmade podcast T-shirt for the ninth night in a row. We're not, we're not buying winter clothes this year, kids. We're just wearing these. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to a wedding today, so I want you to wear your really nice unmade podcast T-shirts today. <laughs> <laughs> we should do an unmade podcast tie. Surely that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Perform a tux, a tux. <laughs> for special occasions. I did wear, I have got a Honey Prawns t-shirt and I wore my Honey Prawns t-shirt out yesterday and I was waiting for someone to say, wow, that's really cool. What does that say? Like, you know, does that mean faith or inspiration or hope? And I was going to say, no, Honey Prawns, <laughs> August Moon, Diagonal Road, but didn't happen. No one noticed. No one commented. Well, I'm not saying no one noticed. No one commented. Okay, fair enough. They were probably too embarrassed yeah. to go up to someone who with. Well, they probably already t-shirt. knew because it's so famous now. Well, that's right. They have been quite popular, those T-shirts, haven't they? You said that. I, I... Yeah, yeah. In fact, seven of them were sold to someone in Adelaide. <laughs> <laughs> How did I know they'd been so popular? Well, I just happened to have some. Because <laughs> you bought them all. But I've added the one that's just the Unmade Podcast logo now, and I quite like that one. So have you got one of them yet? No, I actually don't. <laughs> I should. <laughs> You're waiting for those eight to arrive in the post. <laughs> that's right. I, um, no, that, they look nice. Actually, I bought two plain white T-shirts the other day and because it's mm. winter here, so I sort of wear them, you know, just sort of Calvin Klein, nice clingy one underneath my um, shirt to work and stuff. And, um, yeah. and I was just thinking, oh, should have got some unmade podcast ones instead now. It's never too late. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's not. I'll get on there. Yeah, no, but I, th- I think they look good. They look classy. I like the unmade in different countries ones, actually. I like that a lot. That was my I've idea. discontinued them. Yeah. I've discontinued them. So snap them up. They'll start appearing on eBay for exorbitant prices soon. You can't do anything about that. <laughs> As Tim tries to offload all this stock he's got in his spare room. <laughs> That's right. For instance, I can in an hour there will be a box of them on there for going, going for a crazy price. <laughs> you could flood the market. You're like, you know, Saudi Arabia, how it controls all the world's oil supply. You've just got this huge stock of unmade podcast T-shirts that you could just release as you see fit to control world prices. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you, you once commented, and I think there's a bit of truth in this. I like the t-shirt merchandise because it's I got a I got a, a whole bunch of band t-shirts, right? That and I kept them all for yeah. surprise, surprise, you know, for posterity, bit of nostalgia. All these old mm. band t-shirts, Jeff Buckley and REM and all these old ones. And um the fact that we have our own t-shirt kind of makes me feel like we're in a band. It's cool. <laughs> it's- yeah. Yeah, you're living your fantasy. Yeah, yeah, it's all about the T-shirt. Hold that thought, because we, we might come back to it in a minute. But can I follow up a few things from the previous episode? We don't often, you know, follow up on stuff from previous episodes, but I found it really interesting, some of the things that arose from our last episode, which was the one that was called, what was it called? Misunderstood, I think. I, I don't presume that people listen to more than one episode, so I never feel like I can refer to another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well... A few things I wanted to point out. One was 
I admitted to how I thought the song Piano Man was a duet between a man and a woman for oh, yeah. many years. I didn't realise Billy Joel was just changing the pitch of his voice. That was embarrassing. Well, you'd think so. But can I say how vindicated I feel by the number of people that have been in touch on Reddit and social media and email saying, I thought the same thing. Yeah. In fact, some people thought the exact same thing until they heard our episode where I no. revealed that it was oh. one person. So this was not as rare as I... I thought I was probably the only person in the world that had made this mistake. Turns out, pretty... Well, I won't say common, but turns <laughs> out I'm not the only person in the world. I'm not even the only person involved with the Unmade podcast. Yeah, I was surprised. In fact, even when you told me that in the last... When you shared that in the last episode, I was thinking, ah, oh, did he really think this, like genuinely believe it? Or was it like a fleeting thought, but then it's like common sense kicked in? But no, it seems like that you and many others have held on to this. Um, delusion for quite a long time. Just to be clear, I, I figured it out with reasonably quickly. Other people have gone into adulthood. Well, yeah, no, that is a worry. But <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I, well, in a similar vein, my story about um, the final scene of Jurassic Park, where the birds, to me, appeared as pterodactyls, well, likewise, yes. there were quite a few people yes. who were either just giving me some encouraging sympathy or they too felt the same they'd seen the same thing and i thought oh well i felt quite encouraged yeah vindicated yeah it much more so even than my billy joel one which really surprised me apparently one of the later films does end with a pterodactyl flying away which muddies the waters a bit more but i i, I watched jurassic park the other day just i just got in the mood to watch it again because of that and i again thought what were you thinking, Tim? <laughs> but but yeah, you're right. Loads of pe- loads of people thought it. So really interesting. I actually really enjoyed a lot of the feedback from people with their own misconceptions and mistakes they had from childhood. Yeah. I enjoyed another classic that I didn't think of, but many people thought, and that was the person who wrote in and said that for many years they thought Darth Vader was Dark Vader. Yeah. I've heard that mispronounced before by someone in a meeting and not corrected them. Yeah, so that that person is definitely not alone either. Did you not correct them in the meeting or did you just give them like a force choke and kill them on the desk? No, that's right. (laughs) (laughs) I find your mispronunciation disturbing. (laughs) Don't be too embarrassing. Can I just ask what, what formal meeting you were in that required someone to bring up Darth or Dark Vader? No, I don't want to go into it. It was just... (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, it was years ago in a galaxy far, far away. (laughs) Okay. Can I just say how jealous I am that you get to sit in meetings where you talk about Darth Vader? (laughs) I didn't know such meetings existed, except maybe like Star Wars production meetings. Let me clarify. The purpose of the meeting wasn't to iron out the pronunciation of Darth Vader's name. (laughs) Like... The, the, this is this is where it emerges that Tim was on the uh, script writing team for Phantom Menace. He's just too embarrassed to admit it. <laughs> I don't want to talk about my role in Phantom Menace. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's too, too embarrassed. I, I actually, I wouldn't be surprised if someone on the script writing team for Phantom Menace actually had did not know the name of. <laughs> the correct name of Darth Vader. Yeah. They stuffed up so much other stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if George Lucas called him Dark Vader and someone smart changed it. <laughs> That's right. Well, knowing George Lucas, he'll go back to the original films and re-edit them, like touch them up with <laughs> <laughs> changing Darth Change Vader's it to name. Dark Vader. And and have them fighting with laser swords. That's right. <laughs> Or lifesavers, as we called them as kids. You can just imagine them not quite getting the voice right, like only a master of evil, Dark. Like it's a... <laughs> dark Vader, only you could be so bold. <laughs> George just can't keep his hands off those movies. And then he'll change all the references of Dark to Darth. Come to the Darth side of the <laughs> They swap them around. <laughs> the Darth side of the force. Maybe that's what it's supposed to be. And it just he just happened to be naming that character having been to the dentist that day and he couldn't miss any mispronounce it every time he said yeah, the name. It's a spe- speech impediment. He's Dark Vader, he's on the dark side of the force. It's like, well you you said Darth. He goes, I was <laughs> my face was numb. I've been watching a lot of old films lately, actually, from like the eighties and nineties, or like like listening to reviews of them and stuff like that. And it is interesting when you start revisiting that that time all the mistakes and misconceptions you realise you had. Like what? Top Gun, right? 
you know Goose in Top Gun I do. sits behind Maverick. Yep. And watching that film, I never quite understood the word, but I always heard Goose's role in the plane being referred to as a rearer or rearer, your rear. And I thought it was rear as in you're in the rear of the plane. Yeah. R E A R. Oh, oh yeah, I'm I'm his rear, you know, I'm the guy that sits behind him at the rear of the plane. Yeah. But it never quite sounded right to me. And it turns out it's because they're not saying rear, they're saying Rio and it's and it's a like it's a acronym for radar intercept officer, R I O. That's the role in the plane. You're the R I O. Oh. You're Rio. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's interesting. That seems that seems a bit technical for Goose. I mean, is he up to that? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, yeah. He's good with the gags. I don't know if I'd put him to, to work on the fuel injection system or anything like that. And you know, that's there's a, it's a really obscure scene in the scheme of things in Raiders of the Lost Ark when Marion's monkey runs away in in like you know runs away into the markets and she loses it because yeah. it's going back to its real owner and she's really distracted and Indiana Jones is trying to get her attention back and he says he says have one of these and she's like what is it and he says it's a date you eat them it's a date you eat them it's just like a it's a throwaway line it means nothing mm. but when I was young, I didn't know that a date was a thing that you would eat because that's way too exotic for Adelaide. Mm. <laughs> so I thought he was telling her that we're on a date. What is this? And he's saying, it's a date. And I thought he said, you need them. It's oh. a date. You need them. You need to go on dates. It's like a good thing to do. And I thought that for years and years and years that, that they were out on a date. And he was, he was explaining that to her that we're on a date out in the markets oh. when really he was just offering her a date to eat. There's no end to your, like, delusions is there like this i know mm. i know i could i could i've got i've got a list of 10 more here can i just run through them <laughs> no, <man. laughs> we're not we're not actually making this podcast it's the unmade podcast man. <laughs> this this podcast is called go through brady as he learns the english language in real time <laughs> as brady lives his life over again and corrects and clarifies every detail <laughs> i'm doing a george lucas i'm correcting everything I'm, got- I'm doing a special edition of my life <laughs> Leave it alone, man. Stop tinkering. I'm adding new effects. <laughs> I'll stop only because you've shamed me. It would be bad because every time there's been like a minor explosion, it would be now a massive explosion with extra special effects in your life. Like can you? Like every time you've turned on a Bunsen burner, it would be a <laughs> massive flame because. He's... <laughs> And there'd be like robots stepping in poop and all sorts of stuff. That's yeah. right. And and Jabba the Hutt would just be appearing like in the background of scenes at school. And stuff. <laughs> I'm going to do what I often do and throw in a last minute idea as my podcast idea. Wow. Is this an idea you've had since we've been recording, like right now, or is it from earlier today? It's from about 10 minutes before we started. All right. I think that's prime time, to be honest. It was while I was in the shower, and the shower is my ideas place. Right. <laughs> you have short showers, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I should probably make it my cleaning place, but at the moment it's just my ideas place. <laughs> so, so basically I was thinking about the T-shirts and how, how you love buying the T-shirts because it makes you feel like you're in a band. Mm. Right? <laughs> and And... <laughs> And then it made me think, what a good idea it would be for a podcast to have guests. This is one where it's like a get to know you guest type podcast. And each guest puts together their dream band. Oh. But here's the catch. Here, no, don't get excited. I'm about to take away what you hope this is. Oh, man. Because the idea here is that th- there is no musical component to this. The putting together of your dream band is not like picking like the greatest drummer from history and the greatest singer and that. It's you picking people from your life who don't necessarily have any musical ability. Mm-hmm. They might not be able to play an instrument. They might not be able to sing. You can decide the criteria as the guest, but it's people from your life that you're going to put in your band and you talk about why they're in the band. Right. So it's kind of like, you know, amongst your friends and colleagues and people you know, yep. if you're pulling them together to be the next big band and you're going to go on tour and become famous together and travel the world, who do you want? Music is not a factor. We can just assume they magically can play all the instruments and know all the songs to a professional level. So who do you want in your band and why? So, so you, but the music would be important. So it's like we'd be playing this kind of music because... No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Right. It could just be, I like this person or their personality would be good for the band or it would be a good mix or, 
things like that. I choose so and so because I choose my friend Bill because he's a really nice guy and we travel well together and I know we'd get along well on the tour bus and there never would be fights and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Or I pick my friend Lee because he's a big charismatic show off and I think he'd be a great front man for the band and things like that. It could be you could you could take it how you want. It is funny how you sort of you imagine people like in a band playing certain things like like when you see a band photo in a in a in a magazine and you don't know, really know the band you it, it's funny to try and think who plays what and you always assume the tall lanky guy is the bass player just cuz it's just yeah. something you know what i mean tall and lanky and the fun- hairiest guy is the drummer yeah 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 so you'd probably categorize your friends and family along those lines and 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 you know obviously mm. the and the best looking person the cool looking person is the john bon jovi is the um the lead singer yeah yeah so would i would i be in your band tim um well, let me think. What would you play? Well, based on what you just said, I'm assuming I'm the lead singer. Well, well sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, was, I, I meant what would you play while you were singing is what I was trying to think. That's Do right. you think everyone sees themselves as the lead singer in their band? I think they probably do. <laughs> it, is, yeah. it is funny how you come to see a band and how perfectly they fit that like when you think of that they become so quintessential like the Beatles or U2 where you're used to seeing them it's like it's so funny that you know Edge was made to look like someone who'd had their head down playing guitar in U2 it's like he was born to do that in retrospect you know what I mean it just appears like what a coincidence he looks like a guy who would play guitar in U2 and it's just of course it's just imprinted on your mind because it's the way it's always been the same with the or the Rolling Stones you can't imagine Mick Jagger being anything else or doing anything else. Can I ask you a little side note question here, actually? I thought of this yesterday while I was out on a walk and you were the person I wanted to ask. It's a U2 question. How excited are you about this? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do the members of U2, like, you know, Edge and all that, do they call Bono Bono or do they call him Paul when they're just amongst themselves, like, you know, at a Starbucks or something? They they they, they do call it. They seem to call him Bono. He doesn't say. He said once that his um, father called him Paul. Paul Hewson is his name for those not aware, mm. and, and that his father called him Paul, but everyone else called him Bono because they would have known him when he was still Paul. Yeah, yeah, they were all at school together. But as as teenagers, yeah. they all took on these funny names as part of this little village clan they had going. Right. His full name is Bono Vox, named after an like an uh, a shop that sold um, hearing aids and things in Dublin somewhere. Mm. So it's not like the Edge would say to his wife, you know, oh. It's Paul on the phone. He'd say, it's Bono on the phone. Yeah, they yeah they seem to. It seems synonymous. Now, at- Do you think Bono and The Edge would ever phone each other? Yeah, I think so. They actually holiday together. Oh, right. Like they co-own side-by-side villas in the south of France. So they actually go on holidays together, their families. Oh, wow. So you still haven't answered my question. Am I in your band? Yes. Yes, you're in my band. <laughs> you're... <laughs> I wanted to get that on record before I say that you're not in mine. <laughs> For the purposes of this hypothetical band, you <laughs> not many bands have tambourine players anymore, but I think it's a an underappreciated skill and I can see you. In fact, you know who you could be? Yeah. Noel Gallagher at the moment, right, yeah. is touring with his touring band, which is not Oasis, obviously. He's a solo artist now. And he has a scissors player. He has a French girl that plays scissors and she goes click, click, click with her scissors at some part, which I think is just Fabulous. Let me let me give the people at home just a sample of my scissors playing. I have a pair here. Oh, ready? Yep. Here we go. Well, that's you not... did give me a song request and I'll play one for you. It's not. <laughs> What's a good scissors song? Do you want me to? Let's do the start of Zoo Station. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> See. You do the doo doo part and I'll do the drums. You ready? Go. No, I don't want to do the doo <laughs> <laughs> I'm on fire. Oh. Brady Harrod on scissors. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Try, try something a bit more melodic. Something like with a little help from my friends. Yeah, get by with a little help from my friends. Yeah, I get high with a little help from my friends. That's pretty good. Do you need anybody? I want somebody to love. Yeah. That's good. Oh, that's good. That's a, that's actually really good. It's like you're cutting someone's hair and singing along at the same time. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, oh, that's great. I'd love it, and like, the, like when there's a big number at the end, what I do is I cover my scissors in like a flammable gel and set them on fire, and still play them. <laughs> <laughs> there was that one tragic gig where I decided to throw the scissors to a fan in the audience at the end. It, it kind of went wrong. I can see rock t-shirts with big pairs of scissors on them now. Like they are <laughs> yeah. available now. Unmade podcast <laughs> store. Teddy Spring Store, Brady Hair and Scissors. Well, you know how look, like Metallica will have a skull with like a, a sword coming out of it or a gun from Guns N' Roses. We'll just have a pair of scissors. Like, like <laughs> <laughs> Who else is in your band? Um, Me on scissors. Yeah, I like you on I like you on scissors. And that's good because once the scissors, you've got that person nailed, you can kind of build the band around them. So... <laughs> So you're anointing yourself as lead singer, presumably. Oh, uh, look, I, I don't, I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm worthy of that. I've actually, I play guitar, so I actually kind of like the idea of anchoring the guitar side of it. Oh no, no, I'm only kidding. I will be singing. <laughs> right. You can still like have the guitar for the odd song, you know, like Garth Brooks, just to, for for looks. Just pull it out to looks. So I got something to smash at the end of the song. That's the cool thing to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or to yeah. give away to someone. I love the idea of just having a guitar so that I can take it off and hand it to some kid in the crowd and go, "There you go." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the kid's like, "Can I have one that was actually played?" <laughs> <laughs> the kid just hands it back. <laughs> And I'd like, I'd like to be able to say to the rest of the audience, and you can get yours out in the foyer for four thousand four hundred and forty. <laughs> You're all going. You get a guitar. You get a guitar. You get a guitar. <laughs> I want Brady scissors. Brady scissors. Brady scissors. <laughs> now don't run with those, boy, young man. <laughs> Would there be a moment in the gig where you and all the other band members like? go into darkness and just quietly leave the stage and I get to do my big scissor solo. <laughs> that would be just a little spotlight. Click, click. Yeah. <laughs> but you've got to be careful because when you hand them back to the roadie, you've got to like make sure you hand them handles first. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just picturing the roadie coming out with a little pot with eight pairs of scissors in it and I pick which one I want for that song. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I remember when I saw Bruce Springsteen, right? He would finish a song, take off his guitar and throw it backstage. Like, not angrily, just up in the air. It would be caught by a roadie. And it was like amazingly cool sort of manoeuvre. But I wouldn't recommend mm. that with scissors. That's far too no, dangerous. No, no. Yeah. No. You've got to be careful with scissors. You going to throw anyone else in the band or just me and you? I th- <laughs> scissors and me singing. You not playing guitar, me on scissors. We're kind of <laughs> lacking a bit of sound here. I feel like we need to open it for auditions. You know, I don't know if I want to just grab people, but I know that's the purpose of your group, isn't it? I like to think of my mum being able to to be involved somehow. Oh yeah, mum would be. Um, she'd be. She'd be a very interesting member of the group. I'm not sure what she'd play. Well, she does play a bit of piano. This is a funny story. Did you know we, we got a piano, right? Hmm. And, and it was given to me by my auntie. And we've actually passed it on now. But while we had it, my mum was at the house and she suddenly said, oh, yes, this is what I learnt on. And I said, do you know how to play piano? And she said, oh, yes. And she sat down and played a little bit of piano. And I had no idea my entire life that my mum knew how to play a little bit of piano. It had never come up. I like this idea. I think it could have some fun. But it, it, it feels like you'd have to have someone talking or guests with pretty good abilities to highlight the sort of funnier sides of different people they know and different members of their, yes. you know what I mean? Like if they could do that in an entertaining way, that would be, that's a premise for telling some fun stories. That's for sure. Yeah. Pulling together. A bit. Like for example, my band, I've decided who my drummer's going to be, I think. And it's going to be Professor Sir Martin Polyakov from my chemistry videos. Wow. Yeah. I can see him behind With drums. big frizzy hair, yeah. big yeah. glasses. Yeah. Imagine him on drums. <laughs> that's awesome. He's, <laughs> Lenny Kravitz had someone who we had big a massive afro on drums as well. I think it may have been a lady, but it means I can. Yeah, it was. It was a woman, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I can. I can yeah. picture the professor there. That's cool. Who else? Well, I felt like I should put you in the band because oh. if I started a band and I didn't put you in it, I think you'd you'd probably be pretty angry at me. <laughs> I was going to put you on guitar, but then I thought it'd be more fun to put you on bass because you'd be a bit frustrated by that. 
<laughs> I'll let I'll let you be lead guitar. I'm obviously lead singer. Right. Okay. And like and singer songwriter. Like I write the songs as well. Oh right. What does the band yeah. sound like? Like who who is this? I know you're a big Dire Straits kind of fan. Is it that sort indie, of band? Indie rock, kind of indie rock, a little bit of glam. But do you know what I think would be another fun part of this podcast would be? And that's like, it's the finale to every episode. Yeah. Naming the band. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great idea. I, I want to give mine like quite a sciencey name. And the first two that came to my head, I haven't thought much about it, and I'm sure I could come up with a lot of better ones, but the first two I thought of were either the Neutron Stars or the Radioactive Isotopes. <laughs> that one's better the second one yeah that's good yeah 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 i think the neutron stars because if it's a more glammy band like muse or something no that sounds like some scientists getting together for a fun band at the you know end of the year whereas the um okay the isotopes is kind of it kind of has a bit of a yeah that sounds a bit like more like you were science students but you got a band together and you've actually made it and yeah yeah the baseball team of course in the simpsons is called the isotopes you know the band and we are scientists yeah they which is a favorite band of mine oh really yeah yeah they are i'm going i'm going and seeing them in berlin later this year oh, really? special trip just to berlin to see them they were so named because one time they were like moving or something they were like um you know, with all their gear and their equipment all in boxes and the guy that was helping move them didn't know what what they did and he was like, and he was just having to stack all these boxes into a truck. And he said to them, like, what do you guys do? Like, are you scientists or something? And they said, yeah, yep, yeah, we're scientists. Oh. That's how the name came about. Well, that's not bad. The most unusual name I've heard recently, this is for an artist, is um, Joan as Policewoman. I've not, I heard it years ago, but <laughs> I thought, that, isn't that a classic? It's almost like the start of an old 70s TV show, you know what I mean? And the characters, you know, and Joan as Policewoman, like as the guest stars or something like that but i don't know the origins of the name what's your band called i'm gonna go with fire pigs not because i like it but because it's a bit of a running joke with one of my daughters actually right. and i can't even remember how it started but we've got a band called the fire pigs that we pretend that we're in and we have a little plastic pig that sits on the um the dashboard of the car and that's sort of our little mascot which came from a you know like a a little fate um secondhand sale that we were at and yeah, the fire pigs. So we always joke a, about recording it. That's cool. Out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a cool name. I it's, could see that working. Is fire pigs one word or two words? Uh, I always picture it as one word, but um, I okay. can see it as two. Yeah. I'm not sure, yeah. but yeah. The well, fire you have pigs. to make a decision now in case, it, in case you know, because it's going to be in text now. In the, it could be the title of the episode for all you know. Well, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Fire pigs. Yeah. The fire pigs uh, featuring Brady Heron on scissors. I kind of... <laughs> The fire pigs or fire pigs is harder to. Uh, let me write it down and see. The oh yes, are you going to put a the in it? That's a big question. I think just fire pigs. Fire pigs. It, it it's a bit more sort of new millennium, isn't it? You know, kind of no the bold. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, fire pigs. Fire pigs. Bam, right. on it. One word. <laughs> Bam, on it. That's good. Bam, on it. Tim, today's episode has been sponsored by Storyblocks. Oh, right. Storyblocks Video is a members-only site offering a one-stop shop for stock video. Members enjoy access to an unlimited library. I think unlimited means unlimited use. Obviously, you can't have an unlimited library because that would be infinite, wouldn't it? But That's right. <laughs> but you have you have you have access to the unlimited library, so you can just for your for your membership, you can just keep dipping into that. Or you can go into a global marketplace. What is Storyblocks Video, I hear you ask? Mm. Are you asking that? What is Storyblocks Video? Well, you know what Storyblocks Video is, Tim. It is. I'm perusing it at the moment. So this is a big library of like, I guess you'd call it like stock video, video clips, uh, B-roll, After Effects templates, motion backgrounds, all sorts of things you can use to incorporate into your creations. So if you are, for example a YouTube filmmaker like I am or need this kind of material you sign up and then you can just grab this stuff all the time and I can tell you if you are in a sort of creative job like that this kind of stock footage at affordable prices is like gold dust this is super valuable and this is a great service 
a great thing to, to get on board with. But this is not, it's not just video, is it? It's also, it's audio. There's heaps of audio here. They have an audio library as well and a picture library. So whatever sort of creative thing you're into, you want to be going and checking out the Storyblocks website. You could probably find scissors here. Here, I found some scissors. You got scissors? Like yeah. video of scissors, audio scissors, pictures of scissors? Oh, no, no, no. Is like that scissors? The sound. Can you hear it? Is that coming from Storyblocks? Yep. Wow. I mean, for me, the thing that's most valuable about Storyblocks is getting access to stuff I couldn't get. For example, I actually can get my hands on a pair of scissors pretty easily for a sound effect. <laughs> but if you wanted, some, for example, someone skiing down a mountain, you needed video footage of someone skiing down a mountain, and you need it now, and you don't really want to fly all the way to the Alps to film someone skiing, you'd rather just get it cheap and easy and at really high quality hd 4k all that sort of stuff you just go into your storyblocks account search for someone skiing download the video put it in your project royalty free job done oh that's great so they've got the big unlimited library you can use and they've also got this these marketplace clips that are like extra clips that have been put on and if you're a subscriber you get like a discount on them as well so place to go so to check them out you want to go to storyblocks.com slash unmade storyblocks.com slash unmade and that will also let them know you came from here which is you know that's good news for us as well i'm actually looking at the fact that it's got abc nbc history channel national geographic discovery mtv is are all users of it they all trust it so it's got to be obviously good I've not used it myself, obviously. Well, that, that's why they haven't got your name in that list with National Geographic and MTV and That's NBC. right, as used by T. Hine on all authorised Fire Pigs merchandise. Video clips. <laughs> the next Fire Pigs concert on the big screen, you could be having Storyblocks footage looping behind you. We could, we could. I'll type in Fire Pigs and see what comes up. In Storyblocks? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, there are no results. I'm just going to put pigs into story blocks and see what I get. I imagine you'll get footage of some pigs. It's safe to say if you ever need footage of pigs, story blocks is going to have you covered because I'm currently looking at loads and loads of stuff. There's piglets suckling. There's, there's a pig in a sty. If I do pit fire pigs as two words, a bunch of things come up. Close up and shot of a roast. Um, chefs chopping juicy meat. The kick, you know, they're so there. They've got some great pig footage. They've got loads of it. They've got pigs doing everything. And I, and I mean everything. So it's worth subscribing just for the pigs. Every time we go to the show and we see the little pig, I think, oh, we could get a little pig for around the home. You know what I mean? Like a little pet pig. Because they're all sort of clean when they're not in the mud. They're lovely. I think, I think Luke Perry used to have a pet pig. I have to say... I'm a little bit shocked by how much pig material there is on Storyblocks. And if they have this much for pigs, they've got animated ones, they've got real ones, they've got things with blue screen and green screen so you could drop a pig into another scene. Anyway, before we get lost going down the this rabbit hole. Well, hang on. There is a link between this, you know, there's a link. Because my favourite album cover of all time is Animals by Pink Floyd, which has a pig. Wow. It does. It does has the floating pig, their famous floating pig. Over the Battlesea the battles the Battlesea um power station. It's um fantastic. So just when you thought this sponsorship read might be over <laughs> Tim starts talking about album covers. Uh, thank you, Storyblocks. I can see now the Fire Pigs album cover would be the Battersea Fire Station with a floating pig, but it's on fire. Do you think we'd get any... It's not a fire. The Battersea Power Station. That's what I said. But the floating pig over the top, like the the, the, the hot air balloon pig that they had, except it's it's exploding. It's on fire. So it's kind of a combination of the Led Zeppelin album oh, cover and yeah, the like pig on fire. The Hindenburg. Yeah. I, I cannot wait for the Fire Pig's first album. We've got everything except the music. It's We're ready to go. I think we're ready to go public. You, <laughs> you literally do. You even have a scissors player. <laughs> Not many bands have a scissors player at this stage of their development. We're way... <laughs> no, before they have a single song. <laughs> I was trying to think if I got it. If there's, can you think of an of a song that features the word scissors? Mm. There's plenty with knife. The Scissor Sisters is a band. Oh, but... yeah, that's a band, yeah. Yeah. I was but, thinking uh... of Brian Adams has cuts like a knife. There's a lot of knife. A song with scissors in the name. Let me ask my friend Dr. Google. Yeah. Scissors by Slipknot, 1999. Oh, yeah. 
uh, Running with Scissors by I See Stars. Oh, right. Paper, Scissors, Rock by Chris Brown. Save Your Scissors, Dallas Green. Scissors, Scissors in the Sand by Echo and the Bunny Men. Oh, right. Now, the, the, the thing is, can I find a song that hasn't got scissors in the name? <laughs> <laughs> the Scissors song? Oh, no, that does. <laughs> scissors. <laughs> They are interesting scissors, aren't they? They're quite genius the way they work. Oh yeah, the 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 guy who invented scissors, Sir Edward Scissors, is a <laughs> is a genius. The scissors. I'm looking up Wikipedia now, just reading up on scissors. At this point, can I just thank all our Patreon supporters and let you know that it's your support that's making it possible for you to <laughs> listen to Tim search for scissors on Wikipedia. <laughs> Go to Patreon.com/slash/unmadefm <laughs> if you'd like more. The Wikipedia page has a pair of scissors, and then underneath it says "a pair of standard scissors," and it's <laughs> it's, like, it's such an informative website. All right, yeah. um, um, shall we move on to another idea, please? Because I, well, it's it's funny that my idea actually keeps the clothing conversation that we were having earlier about the the cool new t-shirts. Um, it's in a similar mm. vein because my, I haven't got a cool name for this podcast idea, but I'll go with saying, you know, plainly what's on the tin first. And that is my favorite piece of clothing. People tend to have, you know, you buy clothes, you wear clothes, but every now and then you just fall in love with a piece of clothing. Often you'll hold on to that piece of clothing or it'll be the piece of clothing you wear when you're at home or when you're sick, it's like, I always wear these. Or I love these. And people talk about these are my favorite shoes or these are my favorite jeans, my favorite old jeans that I wear at home. And often there might be a, a story behind them. I've had these since I went to X, Y, Z. I think there's something to be shared. And I enjoy hearing about people talking about their favorite piece of clothing. Yeah. What's, uh, what's, what's number one on your list at the moment? Well, it's, the, it's been with me for quite a while, but my, my mm. favourite piece of clothing is an old uh, brown cardigan that belonged to my dad. And I took it off my dad around the time I was inspired to dress a little bit like Kurt Cobain. So this is going back a long time. <laughs> Right. In the grunge era where you suddenly realise, hang on, my dad's much, much older. And and I realised he had some, you know, some of the things that he had he'd had so long, they were kind of cool retro rather than just daggy dad retro. And one of them was his cardigans. One of them was too small, but another one was pretty good. And and, um, this brown piece of cardigan, this brown cardigan, you know, I've I've had since around, you know, that time. Mm. And I've been wearing it and I love it. And it's got holes and it's even got a safety pin holding one sort of two parts of one elbow together. And I've had it for a long, long time. And I still wear it around the house in winter under, you know, over a t-shirt. And it's probably my favorite piece of clothing. Nice. The funny thing about it though, is my, um, well, I, I kind of think I still look a bit like Kurt Cobain. You know, I've got that sort of, oh, this is me wearing grunge clothes like Kurt Cobain, right. looking cool. My kids have informed me, whenever I put it on, they tell me I look like Friday Barnes, which is, <laughs> you may not know who Friday Barnes is. I don't know what that is. Friday Barnes is a character um, in a book. So have a look. at Have a, have a look. She's kind I'm of. I'm Googling it. Yeah. She's this. Um, oh, so it's a, it's a, it's a girl. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. so she is, all the pictures I see, she is wearing like a brown top. Oh, this looks, this looks like a cool book. This looks like Encyclopedia Brown. It is, it's a little bit like that. That's right. That's how the girls describe yeah. uh, her. But they, yeah, they say you're wearing your Friday Barnes cardigan. And um, whereas I'd like to think of it still as my Kurt Cobain cardigan, you know, the, <laughs> and I'd wear it when I was working at home or just around at home. These Friday Barnes books look great. I think Friday Barnes looks pretty cool, by the way. I think you should take that as a compliment that you look like Friday Barnes. <laughs> she certainly dresses better than Encyclopedia Brown. So what about you, man? Do you have a, do you have a favourite piece of clothing? I definitely, you know, have a rotation and like, you know, this will be my favourite T-shirt for six months or something. And then, and obviously I have like, like most people, I have like an underwear priority list of you go through your favourite pairs of underwear and work your way down until you have to wash because you've used all your good ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mm. But in terms of a favourite pair, favourite item of clothing, I don't have like a standout with some kind of sentimental thing like you have. Did you have one when you were young? Did you have, was there when, you know, your favourite T-shirt you put on or your good T-shirt or something like that, you know, when you were going somewhere special? Again, you would just have the new thing that you thought were cool, like your Adidas Enforcer tracksuit pants or... 
Yeah. I remember I remember that there was a period where it became quite cool to wear bicycle shorts, like tight lycra bike shorts. No. And I remember at <laughs> at school we had a school casual day, so I thought I'd go for the bike shorts. Yeah. It turns out only me and one other kid in the whole school went for that move. <laughs> and uh <laughs> I kind of regret it still. <laughs> still. <laughs> If I was going to go back and do my George Lucas special edition of life, I wouldn't wear bike shorts for that school casuals day, that's for sure. You could get someone to paint some jeans over that footage, is that right? <laughs> uh, to be uh, fair, I didn't get as hard a time as I should have. I didn't no. get as hard a time as I would have given myself. <laughs> that's before I knew you, wasn't it? That's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Thank goodness. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> doesn't matter what I wear, yeah, I feel quietly confident Tim would have worn something worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a legendary piece of clothing that you've, you've always deeply appreciated. Well, yes. I, I think the time has finally come on the Unmade podcast for us to tell people about this thing, Tim. Well, have we not mentioned it before? This legendary piece of clothing. I don't think it has ever come up on the podcast. Oh. I don't think it has. And I think maybe it's time. To mention the Fanta shorts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when do you first remember seeing the Fanta shorts? Well, I think... So this is a pair of baggy shorts that Tim had in his <laughs> teen years, I guess. Yeah. That were just branded with the soft drink Fanta. So they just had the word Fanta on them and stylized <laughs> blue and orange bubbles. Like, you know, like it was just a like... It was just the look of Fanta. I don't know. I don't know what that purpose they were made for. <laughs> in fact, I don't know what purpose they were made for. Why did someone make Fanta shorts? Oh, it was a personal sponsorship deal. I got a lot of fancy stuff. <laughs> My agent organised it, and so I just needed to wear them. I, I, Mum brought them back from a second-hand shop, believe it or not, called A and E. Okay, anything and everything. Right, and right. she, yeah, she brought, and I thought they were cool because it was like, oh yeah, like cool Coke Fanta. You know, this is great. So I just started yeah. wearing them. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, it, it appears I wore them a lot because they became quite legendary. Until, yeah, they um, became faded. and Didn't they once split when you were wearing them in some embarrassing way or something? Or? No, that was another pair of happy pants. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a story for another day. <laughs> that was coming down the slide. At um, I was wearing happy pants, which if you if you're too young to know about happy pants, just Google it and then you know look away quickly. <laughs> and um, but we, we were at that. What's that play? Is it Monash Playground? What's the playground? Monash. Out? So the Monash Playground has all this steel play equipment, and it's it's kind of fun. But but on it was a wet day, drizzly, so the steel slides were dangerous and. I'd come, I came flying down and they must have got caught on something and I flew off the other end and landed and rolled. And yeah, mm. there was a massive tear <laughs> up the back. And I remember there yeah. was, <laughs> yeah. You put on a bit of a private show, did you? Or? That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that was a, a worry. So those happy pants didn't last long. The Fanta pants wouldn't have no. let, Fanta shorts wouldn't have let me down like that. So anyway, for to, to, to round, to at some point, obviously, like, you know, Obviously, it was a running joke between us, these shorts. And at some point, Tim retired them mm. and retired them to a drawer and stopped wearing them. But mm. was it what birthday was it? Was it your 18th or your 21st or something? 21st. Oh. 21st. Yeah. For, yeah. For Tim's 21st birthday, I conspired with his mother and obtained the Fanta shorts from their retirement drawer. <laughs> and I had them framed and I presented them to Tim at his 21st birthday party. <laughs> With a little, like, I don't know, there was some message to go with them or something. And they were like, yeah, like yeah. where is that? Where are those framed Fanta shorts now? They're, they're still hanging on. No, they're not hanging on the wall anymore. <laughs> I do sodium. still have the Fanta shorts. I do have them, but they are folded away. Yeah. I think, yeah, the framing. Oh, they're not framed that. anymore. No, no. Do you know what? That's good because I think now that I'm like older and have a little bit more income, I would like to get them reframed more professionally, <laughs> like box framed and like mounted with a like proper gold plaque and everything. Can I have them and have? I'm gonna get next time I come to Adelaide. Yeah, I'm gonna take them to that old framing store I used to use for my astronaut memorabilia, yeah. and I'm gonna get them. Uh, I'm gonna get them properly framed, like in a way that will make you proud. Like nice, like, you know, nice green, officey green matte box. 
What am I supposed to do with them then? Like, if you, I've got to have them on the wall. Office? Like, that's just hang them in your office. Oh, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I'd make it classy. Like, I'd make it classy. So, like, there would there would be like just a small little plaque underneath that just says like the Fanta shorts, so people can. So it can be what you make it. It could be ignored. If people ask you the story, you can tell it in the length you want. It would be. I think it would be nice. But it's not even like they're a small little thing that you put. They're massive. So they're going to take up a massive prominent place on the wall. And yeah, um, but I think if they were nicely done, because they're so faded and old, they do look like they're something important. Like they look like, you know, they were thrown to you by Mick Jagger at a Stones concert or something. They look like they could have... <laughs> <laughs> they they look like they've seen stuff, you know. They it it doesn't look like you'd liked them. It looks like they're important. It's like the Shroud of Turin. <laughs> it's not. The only people that frame shorts are boxing champions. So people are going to think they're boxing champions. Yeah, shorts. exactly. But that's mm. it. Some people will just ignore them. People who ask, you get to tell a really touching story. I think you're missing a trick here because of how faded they are. And like, they have been patched up a bit, haven't they? By your mum and had patches yeah. sewed in them. And they're like, yeah. they've like, they're properly, properly worn. The the nearest thing I can think that they look like is the Shroud of Turin. They, the nearest thing you can think of. <laughs> the Fanta shorts of Turin. <laughs> they, you know, they're held together. Like you, you do them up. I think they've got, yeah, you do them up and then they've got like a string. You know how like shorts, you know, like, for swimming and whatever have a string but i lost the string and so f- for almost the entire time i've had them that's a been a shoelace a white shoelace that holds yeah. them up oh yeah it's like it needs to be like the, you know how the shroud of turin was there was once a fire and it got a bit burned and i think the nuns threw it out a window and then they sewed like patches over some of the areas that got burned hmm. that's what the fanta shorts are like they've even got you know signs of repair signs of their story i think they like i feel quite uh respectful of them now they they move me <laughs> oh man this this is um I, I I okay okay we'll see where this goes. I feel like I want to give them to you even just because I want to get rid of them. But you're you're just so in awe of them. <laughs> People are going to come around. You just want to touch them and feel the power or something. They're a sacred object in in my life. <laughs> they are. They're, if you threw them away, I would be mad at you. I wouldn't throw them away because of the nostalgia of because they don't yeah. take up much room. But if they were um framed i would be tempted to put them in a cupboard rather than you know what i mean like it's but anyway 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 i'll see i'll see what you do with them and i'll assess them at that time I've, i can see it in my head it's beautiful it's beautiful <laughs> you did do a lot of this sort of stuff didn't you you got nasa hats and badges and got things really tastefully yeah. framed yeah i'm into framing i the, the the art of framing things is something i really enjoy Mm, and I can just mm. see how this one could be done. I have a regular framer down the road on Unley Road who does a really good job and I get certificates done and I've got some lovely prints and, and um, some um, movie posters and that are classic and hard to find and they always come out looking really good. It is very satisfying, isn't it, to do something like that? All right. So, uh, what was I can't remember. Oh, yeah, favourite clothing. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. I had not remembered the Fanta shorts when we started talking about this in terms of clothes. I just but. assumed you were te- I, I assumed you were teeing it up for a big Fanta shorts like memory lane. No, I thought that was just a that was that was your thinking. No, no, they did get a mighty round of applause at my twenty first birthday when you pulled them out in the speech. Rightly so, rightly so. <laughs> Your buddy framing certificates and movie posters when you got the Fanta shorts folded up in a drawer. It's a travesty. <laughs> Well, so they're obviously, they're, so it's, your favourite piece of clothing belongs to me. That's, that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> that seems to be the case. Yeah. I, I'll tell you, uh, you've reminded me of one now. Yeah. The, the, I, and it does still exist somewhere because I would not have thrown this away, but I don't know where it is. But, and it also it's a good indication of how times have changed. When I was in my early teens i became still living in adelaide i became a fan of the liverpool football club or soccer team as i would have called it back then yeah this is the english football team liverpool and this was at a time when before english football was all over tv and the media and the only game you could watch each year in australia was the fa cup final which liverpool 
made and I watched them win win it. And that's how I kind of bonded with Liverpool. And you could watch a little bit of highlights, I think, on a Monday night, maybe. So I became really into Liverpool. But it wasn't like as omnipresent as it is now. And you could not buy like a Liverpool soccer shirt in Adelaide. That would be impossible. Mm. Now, now, now you get them everywhere. So my auntie at the time, my auntie Kath, moved and lived in England for many, many years. And she was coming home to visit the family. And the request was put to her, while you're in England, can you buy Brady a Liverpool shirt, a soccer shirt? And she brought it home and it was given to me in Adelaide. And this was unbelievable to me. Mm. I'd only ever seen what this looked like on TV. Oh, wow. And to see the red shirt with the sponsor's name on it was when they were sponsored by Candy and stuff like that. Like, it was it was like it had dropped into my life from another universe. It was like holy to me. And I wore it once and posed for some photos in the front yard kicking kicking a soccer ball and then never wore it again. And I hung it on a hanger and it hung like on my wall as like this this special thing to look at, like a poster. I couldn't mm. believe I had a real shirt that was the same as the one that was being worn by Ian Rush and John Barnes and that. It was it was incredible to me. And then I got older and stuff and it, and it became tiny because it was, it was for the boy. So I couldn't, it got to a point where I could no longer wear it. But this shirt, which is quite like a tacky design now by modern standards is still really special to me and when you can buy them now retro like everything old is new again so they sell these shirts again i'm tempted to buy one just because i still get like the little flutter of excitement when i see that shirt and and it because of it reminds me of the excitement of getting one and i must have been you know one of the only people in australia that had one of these things and do you 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 don't have the original or it's not somewhere i do somewhere It, it yeah, it will be folded up. I never throw it away. It will be folded up in a box somewhere, but I'm not sure where it is. I've been gradually migrating my hoarded stuff back to England, but I, I can't think if I've I've come across that one. So it's either at my mum or dad's house in a box somewhere, or unless it's gone over here and I've I don't know. I haven't seen it for many years, but I've still but it still exists, hopefully, hmm. and that uh, it's and it's something I only ever wore once in my life. I only wore it one day. And then the rest of the time, it just became like a, a decorative piece that because I didn't want to sully it in any way. It was like, yeah. it was a sign of things to come with me, wasn't it? You know, how I'm a bit of a memorializer of objects. But it is a funny, it's a, it's a funny paradox that your favorite clothing, the more you wear it, the closer it is to you not having it anymore. You know, so there's always that tension of, yeah. oh, these are my good sneakers. But if I wear them, then they'll get creased and dirty and then they won't yeah. be the good sneakers and all that. Yeah. There is a part of me now that appreciates the wear and tear of things like your Fanta shorts. They're way more special because of all the damage and how, how worn in they are. But another part of me does think like to preserve things. For example, I went out for dinner the other night with my mate and his son, they're Australian and his son had this Australian cricket hat that's been autographed by loads of players, like after games or going on the boundary. He's got all these famous Australian cricketers to sign it in like Mm. a black marker. So it's covered in signatures of, you know, great famous cricketers and that. And he was just wearing it. He was wearing it out. We were at a restaurant and we were going out. And, and I was saying, I can't believe you wear that. Like, all your signatures will fade or it could rain or, like, it could get dirty. Like, that's a hat with so many amazing signatures on it. That should be, like, framed like a museum piece. And he's, like, a kid. And he's like, nah, I want to wear it. It's cool. Look at it. All these famous people have signed it. Yeah, people that's cool. It, you know? you got to live your life. you got to live your clothes and that. That's great. Yeah, I like that. Good on him for doing that. Otherwise, things become all about their value. You know, you like things getting autographed and what's it worth and all that would be worth something. And it's like, no, you got to wear it and enjoy it and have the joy of it. And, yeah. You know, that's great. I, I like am that. like that with watches. I know some people get watches and just put them in a case as collector's items or keep them in their original box. But I do like wearing my, my watch. I've got a moon watch and a Mega mean moon watch, which is the same as the one they wore on the moon. And I wear that all the time and everywhere. And I like now that it's been places. It's been to Antarctica. It's been to Mount Everest. It's been in the room where the moon rocks are stored in Houston. Like this watch has had adventures with me. And to me, it, it becomes more valuable to me for that reason there we go so the nice idea favorite clothing and i think it would be interesting to have people come on and talk about what you know things that may it either could be a particular type of clothing that they always buy over and over and over again you know i like this particular size brand of this and i always get these or it could be and i think probably more interestingly something that they've held on to that they treasure and they you know wear all right well i reckon we should 
Paul Stumps now, Tim. Yeah, nice work. Can I encourage people, if you want to talk about what you would like to name your band, go and tell us in the subreddit, in the Unmade Podcast subreddit. And likewise, if you've got a favorite article of clothing you want to tell us about, maybe show us a picture of it. Go to the subreddit, or you can you can get in touch with us on Twitter, or drop us an email, all those things. But we really love hearing from everyone, and you know, if it's really good, we might bring it up in a future episode. You never know. You never know. I might start a uh, I might start like a a crowdfunding thing to get the Fanta shorts spe- special <laughs> specially framed. Although <clears throat> Tim's made it pretty clear he's not going to put it in his office, which is a bit disappointing. But. <laughs> 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 Only because there's that special spot over the fireplace at home that's <laughs> which is I, I feel for like them. I feel like I feel like I obviously feel like the fan of shorts are more special than you. I would have thought it might be, go the other way, but I've made a promise to my daughters that I would incorporate a word each in this episode that they said. Right. And they both came up with a word. And I've not found yeah. any place to mention either of them in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> you can make them just the last two words of the episode. Shebangabang and salami.